Welcome to Show Studios, fully digital live panel discussions in collaboration with Harrods. Spring summer 2021, experts from all parts of the industry will discuss and debate the most exciting brands of the season. Today, during London Fashion Week, we're going to be discussing Burberry. My name is Adam Andrasik, and I'm your host for this panel, and I'm the former creative director of Guy Roche Paris and a London-based brand consultant. Uh, somebody else want to jump in? Yeah, my name's Lydia King. I'm fashion director at Harrods. My name's uh, Jimothy Lacoste, and I'm a musician. Uh, Martin, I can't seem to hear you. Can you hear me now? Yep, I can hear you now. Uh, I'll just go again. So my name's Martin Aroma, and I'm a photographer and writer. Okay, so we're going to jump right in this. Um, I think one of the biggest things about this Burberry show that everyone was talking about, because I've seen like maybe three or four uh, pieces in the press from either uh, Business of Fashion or uh, um, Vogue Business, it was all talking about um, the new uh, streaming collaboration that they were doing. Um, between Burberry and Twitch. I wanted to see, you know, I wanted to get your read on it when you were watching it live. You know, what did you think of that collaboration? You know, do you think it was successful? And do you think it made sense for Burberry in the direction that Ricardo is going at this moment? Uh, I go? That's it, you go. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> No, I was going to say, I think it's quite interesting. I think it's a good way of kind of bridging the gap between fashion audiences of different ages. So using some Getting a younger fashion audience, you typically might find fashion week and luxury fashion uh, inaccessible. So, yeah, I think it was a very positive move. I think um, a few other things like Martin Rose is doing, like releasing harmonics via Craigslist, I think. Mm -hmm. like, one from Burberry's own heritage, I think it was in 2012, they did a, a show via Twitter. So, they do have a history about finding innovative ways to um, reach audiences. And I think it was a very, very cool idea. Um, Lydia? Yeah, I mean, I would agree. I think um, it's always it's sort of interesting when a new format comes to life um, within a fashion show. I think Burberry have been streaming, you know, their catwalk. They were one of the first of so maybe 10 years, um, albeit in different, you know, iterations. Um, and this was definitely billed as, you know, a digital experience for unprecedented times. So why not do something new um, alongside that in terms of format? Yeah. Um, Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Really, yeah, they're basically get like doing that to get a new audience, um, to reach a wider audience. Um, it's always quite exciting to see that, to see how a brand can um, do it and accomplish it. Um, and yeah, it's really sick. Um, Timothy, actually, I've got a question for you. Uh, being, you know, from a music background, what did you think of the uh, the performance? Um, especially, you know, taking into account, uh, you know, Ann Imhoff's um, uh, presentation style and uh, Eliza Douglas's, um, uh, you know, sort of uh, live soundtrack added to the entire show. I really liked it straight away. Mm -hmm. uh, like when the guitar was coming in. I was like, this sounds really good. And um, it was a really good song. It's like a song that it doesn't get boring because you're waiting for the snare to come in. You're waiting for the voice to come, you know. So it was really a really good pick, really good pick. Um, and Martin, uh, uh, you know, you talk about, um, you know, you have a background in creative directorship and uh, photography. And I'm thinking about, you know, the, the, the Twitch stream and how they did the squad stream for it and you could, you could view the show from four different angles um, live, and you could essentially decide, you know, you know what sort of um, direction that you wanted to take, uh, consuming that platform. I mean, did that change the way that you felt about the collection? Did it add anything to it as you were watching it? Um, yeah, again, just about accessibility to make fashion more accessible for viewers. I think it's good because if we're at the front of a runway show, you obviously see someone walk towards you and then walk past. So you get more of a three-dimensional view of the clothes, which typically you wouldn't get just from press shots. Mm -hmm. They can have a move in terms of making people feel more immersed in the show. And in a sense, I think, you know, people watching have probably got a better look of the clothes than you would at a typical fashion week. So I think it's a really good idea. 
Yeah, I mean, I think that's that's probably the one of the you know kind of oddest things is you know you have a uh, a show in which you're not really you're not going to have an audience there, so it's all completely filmed and it's all already you know dictated what the um, the views are going to be. But oddly enough, like you say, it felt incredibly immersive. Like it, you know, there's that beginning scene where the model is she's getting dressed in that uh, uh, circular dressing room with all of the mirrors, and it almost felt voyeuristic in a way. Do you agree? I mean, uh, or is there any other thoughts on? I definitely got that sense, and it almost gives a sense of a of home. I think you know, you know, obviously Monday when you're finally up behind the curtain, I think you actually grown, especially both of you, because of the nature of them, they can feel as a as a consumer almost like there's a boundary between you and the brand. Mm -hmm. It really helps to alleviate that a bit. I think you also got this sort of feeling of confinement. It's almost like, you know, being stuck at home and there's this moment she sort of zipped up her boots and then the screens turned and she emerged. It's that, you know, hate to say it, but, you know, emergence from confinement that I think was, was so relevant. Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, you know, and all the, uh, the circle motifs that they had in the entire show where everyone was sort of encapsulated within that as well, even on the outside, it had that same kind of feeling as well. Kind of like, you know, breaking that boundary. A confinement or a barrier or something you have to step over or cross um, to emerge. Mm. Quite powerful. So I could ask what, when we look at that, this collection and we think about that performance, what do we think about the clothing? Is it, does it feel secondary to that performance or, or how, as you know, the um, uh, fashion director at Harrods, how do you look at this, uh, you know, sort of um, presentation and do you, do you separate it or is it, is it all organically together as a whole? I mean, I think, <laughs> Um, it definitely challenged what your ordinary sort of perceptions would be of a show because um, typically, you know, you've watched this, you know, Burberry would always do a live extravaganza and whether you're sort of there or watching, you know, it's usually staged in a, a big sort of location in Olympia or the Tate Modern. Um, but the format's pretty much the same, right? The lights come on, the models come out. And I think the mixture of formats, um, you know, it was almost sort of one set to another and then movement, music, um, combined with the Twitch format where you could watch from different angles, um, gave a sense that you sort of didn't know what was gonna happen next, which I quite liked. And for a while from the way I was watching it, aside from that sort of start um, with the model in that sort of a mirrored box. Um, you just saw the white sweats for ages. So I was, I was sort of thinking, oh, what's what's going to happen here? Because um, that's quite unlike Burberry, but it was very, you know, white loungewear, reflective of maybe what most of us are wearing. Maybe not white, but <laughs> sweatpants, yeah. watching it from home. Um, so I think it was a gradual then introduction of fashion as the catwalk started. But I liked that format. I thought it was intriguing. It wasn't just a sort of, you know, cut and paste of what had happened before. That, that was my view. Um, you definitely had to sort of look for some of the clothes as, as the show went on. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I also think there is something, you know, quite interesting about, especially with a um, designer like Tishi, where there's almost, almost this dichotomy between, uh, you know, this haute couture worked, you know, beautiful craftsmanship sensibility and this very sharp idea of how to merchandise a collection. And with this one, it felt like he was able to take both of those and, and kind of work them together and they didn't feel out of place. I'm talking specifically about the sort of, you know, Lacoste-esque white polo shirt with white um, trouser. It felt almost like, um, uh, like a crowd uniform like they were there to view the other collections in this sort of way. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but. Yeah, yeah I thought it was like a reflection of just an everyday, it was like a reflection of us. It's like us watching us, watching them, <laughs> but all combined together. I, I liked the idea. Hmm. And I think, you know, there, there was so, sort of some bold new things like color was actually really vibrant against that backdrop. Um, in past shows, we've maybe seen a lot of camel dominating the catwalk or just purely monochrome um, for a big space, but there was bright orange and blue and there was sort of 
elements of different ideas rolling through and you can see that in the color palette. Mm. Uh, Timothy, what like when you're looking at this from a you know menswear perspective or from a performance perspective, are is there anything uh, that you know jumped out at you um, that felt more contemporary, uh, you know, in regards to even silhouette or cut or or graphics in this collection? Like like the fact that it was in the forest, I think it's it's very, it was just very different. Yeah, like most of the time it's in like a you know in a museum. It like because it was in the forest. It's more like DIY, do it yourself. You know, more natural. And they picked a really good forest because usually <laughs> it's hard to find a good forest where clothes would stand out. You know, there's too much trees or too much stuff on the ground. But that, they actually picked a really good one. So that was yeah, that was really cool. That was like quite inspirational. I I agree. I I am. Um... After that performance was done, I was looking it up to see like, was this shot in the UK? Was it shot in like California? Where was this done? Exactly, yeah. Full trees, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, amazing, amazing. Um, so I'd like to talk, I think that takes us into a nice segue to talk about what Ricardo was uh, you know, thinking about with this collection. He titled it In Bloom. Uh, he talks a lot about how um, water and nature are uh, in a, a circle of life together. And there's also uh, the idea of uh, a contemporary fairy tale, you know, a love story that blooms between a mermaid and a shark. Um, and when I look at that, I immediately start to think about Ricardo's, you know, his, his big heyday when he was a Givenchy and he was doing the Rottweiler t-shirts. I mean, what do you think about it, you know, the collection in regards to those themes that he's laid out there? Yeah, I mean, I think you're right. There was the sort of Rottweiler versus Bambi back then. Um, I think what was um, great about it was that he definitely sort of went on this journey from sort of grand relax to glamour. You know, those amazing crystal mesh kind of shimmering pieces that came through at the end, the dress, but also reworked leggings mixed with leather and you know by the end she was ready for life again you know she was going somewhere cool tough there was a hot party somewhere I you know I, I think he took us on that journey but yeah. definitely you know it was about reconnecting with nature as a base and you saw that in the prints as well that came through and Martin um you know I, I can see on your shirt you've got like logos on it I mean did the it when you when that collection was coming out as Givenchy and even these ones now, I mean, do you feel that these are, uh, it's like a more contemporary take on what happened before or is it him sort of going back through his archives or, I mean, what what's your read on it? I feel as though um, the themes he was sort of trying to touch on, but sort of whether it be blooming and nature with emergence and stuff, I feel like that more through the color palettes that are used more so than the use of logos, because as you say, that's always, and the use of logos has always been part of his sort of like DNA. Mm -hmm. um, it's a sort of like explosion of colour, which is really sort of like helped by the background. Uh, that to me feels like a sort of like step forward, um, which I really like. Mm. Yeah, I agree. It's this kind of tough glamour. So is it a mermaid? Is it a shark fin? You know, it, it, it's beautiful, but it's definitely got some sort of edge and it felt a lot more... I don't know, maybe because of the atmospheric music, like there was a real undertone, there was an edge um, that went all the way through. Yeah, it felt like there was a, I mean, he says it as well in the release, you know, there's a sort of spirit of rebellion there, but yeah. then he's also talking about, um, uh, I mean, I, I just, he talks about, uh, you know, uh, fishermen, um, uh, inspiration such as the, uh, the bib front trousers um, that, the model wears in that first scene as she's, uh, you know, emerging from that um, uh, circular mirror well. Um, and, you know, I look at this and I, I'm wondering, you know, Timothy, going forward, is this a direction that you think he should continue with? This, does it make sense for Burberry as a brand as, as you know it from your youth? Um, I honestly like the fact that he's, he's actually changing it up. Mm -hmm. um, like when I saw the trench coat with the denim at the top, the last, that's a big move and it looks really good. I feel like he, he definitely should 
continue that and Burberry should continue like being rebellious um, just because a lot of brands aren't doing that. Mm-hmm. And, like I think he can definitely, he's, he's smashing it. So like that was crazy. When I saw that trench coat with, 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 with denim, that was like, oh, this is very different. It's good. So yeah, he needs to continue that. I agree. I loved that mixed fabric. I think it was quite a good sort of day and then trench it will you know because where where are we going are we going home are we going to the office where are we going well you can go to either <laughs> with that trench on you look amazing and not out of place in either world yeah exactly um so well i mean i hope ricardo's watching because then maybe he should send one to you jimothy that would be pretty good <laughs> that would be really good yeah <laughs> um so if we think about, uh, there was the sort of performance in the middle of the collection as well, uh, where there were, um, you know, a, a group of, um, I guess you'd say dancers, uh, almost mimicking a kind of like, uh, you know, corporate retreat performance where they were falling back into the into each other into each other's arms. It's a sort of like leadership kind of, um, uh, you know, exercise. I mean. If we take that with uh, all the other visuals that we've had in this show, I mean, does it make sense with that? Does it heighten it? What do we think about um, that sort of, um, you know, that sort of performance in it? Um, I think looking at it from a creative direction point of view, for me, the best art is art that's quite reflective of a moment. Mm-hmm. So- going on now about people returning to offices the sort of new face of employment and there's a lot of debates about whether it's safe for people to return to offices and such i think um something that reflects out the corporate world but in a more free way it's like quite a nice reflection of the fact that we're having debates about whether or not people should be working from home whether that was his intention or not or if i'm just reading into it i don't know but those were my thoughts thinking about it and if if that was the intention then He's done a really good job of creating something that is quite reflective of our day-to-day lives. Hmm. Yeah, I totally agree. And actually, that's where Twitch in in the format is quite, you know, great because you see all this, you know, burst of what everyone's thinking at the same time. And that, you know, it watched reading the comments. I think everyone was sort of amused by the wrestling and, you know, then the, you know, what was going to happen next in the performance. Um, it was almost quite gothic in terms of, you know, some survivors striding through the forest in these, you know, amazing crystal dresses. And then some um, people in the performance um, art part almost needing support and, um, you know, falling back onto others. It was, it was quite evocative, I thought, of a juxtaposition between those two feelings. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, he talks as well about, you know, uh, the British summertime and um, I guess, uh, you know, mixing that with the other beach references. Uh, and I put all that together and I look at it, you know, if I'm looking at it from a sort of merchandising standpoint, um, you know, is there, are there sort of like key themes or pieces in it that stuck out more than others in relation to the theme or even just in, in regards to the rest of the collection itself? you know, things that you looked at and you said, okay, that feels like the new direction for Burberry, that sort of silhouette. Maybe it's the, um, you know, the, the sort of hybrid trench that Jimothy was talking about. Um, but I mean, you know, were there any other pieces that you looked at that you thought, you know, that's the direction? I think streetwear was heavily referenced and obviously he's done streetwear in the past, but I think um, it wasn't just the sort of white, silhouettes it was also you know the hooded pieces the you know the oversized shapes um yeah I think the the pieces that I sort of really loved were the sort of the tough thigh high boots as well um you know that they, they were quite strong um and also that uh, back to that crystal mesh story which I loved sort of with holes in leather and you know that reworking of fabrics I thought that felt really fresh and new mm. Yeah, the um, that those those last like crystal uh crystal looks, the crystal pieces that came out, those really reminded me of um, you know uh when he was a Givenchy and he did those collections where it was like the head to toe um, haute couture on the basketball court, sort of mixing those two worlds, and it's really great to see you know that come out again in a sort of kind of like 
I, I would say streetwear, it felt looser, but there's still a heritage attached to it. That's yeah. quite exciting. Do you feel, or do you, um, do you see that people respond to, cause he, he takes, he looks a lot at the heritage of, of you know, British fashion as well. Uh, yeah. In his first couple of collections, he really talked about, um, well, we really worked with, you know, rugby shirts and, and uh, I think the last one, it was a lot of um, sort of barber padded coats. Do you, do you see yourself or, you know, even your customers responding to things like that, or is it more conceptual things? Oh, I think totally. I think um, in the past, he's been sort of really patriotic, you know, it's definitely been, you know, definitely an Italian glamour, you know, which he's so well known for, but definitely sort of drilling down to patriotic, you know, whether it's plaid or the Union Jack or, you know, reworked trench sort of again in multi variations. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, there's always a customer that knows and loves uh, Burberry for that, and that's what they'll buy into. But I think, um, you know, the new things that he did, and maybe the more relaxed things like the mixed trench, um, you know, that, that maybe speaks more to, you know, maybe a younger customer and maybe um, a more fashion forward customer that doesn't just want those sort of British heritage pieces, but... Um, appreciates, of course, the quality and the craftsmanship, but wants just something a bit different. Um, I, yeah, he spoke to that. I don't know what you guys think. Uh, there was those images up of the last collection where he had the um, uh, check on. Can we pull those back up, the Burberry check? Yeah, here. So Martin, thinking about what we just saw for the new collection and then looking back at this, I mean, how does that how does that work together for you? Does it does it feel like a, a logical progression, or does it feel like a sort of a, a kind of like full stop on a on a period of work that he was doing, and then he's moving into something else? Um, I think what would have been interesting to see is for me what something that stood out about this is the mixing of fabrics. Mm. And really interesting silhouette. So maybe if some of those checks were attributed to the now mixing of fabrics and the silhouettes, I can definitely see that being something that he continues going forward. Of course, contingent upon how well it's received, but I don't imagine that anyone would try and take Burberry forward without having at least some reference to those old um, all over prints, because it's sort of, at least for me, the first thing I think of when I think of Burberry, so when I think about films like Piddlehood, and um, even weirdly, I think it was something Burberry weren't happy about, but I think EastEnders was actually the first context in which I knew what Burberry was because of a character called Bianca well knocking all over mm. Jack. Uh, as I say, whether Burberry are happy about that, I don't know, but I think it would be a mistake to completely throw that away. <laughs> I mean, I, I agree. I mean, honestly, that's probably the, one of the first references that I knew it by growing up in the US, um, just sort of seeing like uh, the football hooligans and going, oh, that's Burberry check. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Maybe that's not what they want, but... <laughs> That's what you yeah. call so dressing. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, Timothy, um, what about you? How does that, how does that relate? And also, I guess you know, looking at that um, staging of this show, which was extremely industrial. I think they had like a live DJ, um, uh, and it was you know um, really. I guess it was really choreographed, but it didn't feel as loose as uh, the other performance. I mean, what do you think about, even seeing from these still images? Yeah, like, I really like outdoor performances and yeah. it's more like, it's more free and less like intimidating and scary for everyone. And it's, it just reminds me of like a festival, um, you know, it's, yeah, like, again, it's like, the bed at the same time, it's very classic. It's like performing outside, it's, you know, it's, yeah, it was really good, yeah. Mm. I like the way the, the rules were slightly broken as well. You know, Joan Smalls is taking out her phone and doing selfies and posting them. And, you know, one of the models had, had the hose with the dry ice, you know, it was kind of, you know, it wasn't unusual, like, you know, models stand in a line and come in and go out. It felt more interactive or, I don't know, it felt like they were more part of it, the production, that is. Yeah. I agree. I mean, it felt really organic. Um, are you talking about that part where, like, she's like standing on the side, and she just takes her model, she takes her phone out and takes a photo? Yeah, and then she yeah. posted on her Instagram, you know, the pictures and said, "Love that we were able to take, you know, photos." 
Oh, sorry, I think we just got a lag there for a moment. So stirring, like, yeah, actually, you don't ever think and take a photo of themselves. Am I lost? No, you're good. We got it. <laughs> it was cool. No, I, I love that moment. Um, I was sitting there uh, with my partner and we were debating for like 10 minutes trying to figure out, was that real? Was she, did she actually, you know, was she scripted to do that? I was like, please, I hope it wasn't because it was really, really good. <laughs> oh, there's the picture. Yeah. And I yeah. mean, who takes a selfie and looks that great? I mean, <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, I did get, I did get one sort of like, you know, really weird vibe from when, when I watched it. And I guess it's because I'm from the US and you know, there was all those forest fires that were happening and you've got all that smoke and it had that sort of like eerie kind of, you know, um, really powerful feeling to it. I don't know if anyone else, you know, got that or I know, I know that there was, um, uh, there was a lot of like uh, film references that people were talking about on, uh, um, uh, on the chat. I think I read it in like Vogue Runway um, but, um, I just wanted like, you know, were there any other feelings that you guys had while you're watching it? Any, like, cause he talks about it being dark and ominous in a way. I think for me, um, whenever I see a bunch of people in the forest, my mind immediately goes to horror movie. Mm. And so with the sort of dark ominous feel to it, that really sort of heightened that. But then, I mean, you got the sort of, I don't know. I just kept thinking to myself, if this was a horror movie and they were trying to escape, they'd be really inappropriately dressed. Sort of like took my focus away from the show for a few minutes and I circled back. But no, there was a bit of like a horror feeling to it for me, which I quite enjoyed because I love, you know, narrative and the idea of the cinematic pertaining to fashion. So I really enjoyed that. Hmm. Lots of the comments as well that were saying, you know, when when's the satanic um, sacrifice? gonna start i think i totally agree with you it, there was that sort of real horror movie or dark drama that you know everyone's been watching in lockdown feeling coming through mm. martin would you um you know you, you talk about the cinematic feel of it uh is that something that you hope to see you know maybe in other designers in london fashion week or when we move to paris or milan in paris uh to an extent i mean first and foremost for me the, the runway shows a moment and it's the clothes that will be more important when they're seeing them in physical spaces. So mm -hmm. I'm definitely all for creativity, but first and foremost, fundamentally for me, it's about the creations. And I also don't, I wouldn't want people to sort of feel that because we have done this cinema is then the way to go, because then it's just, you know, not special if we're seeing like 10 different takes on 10 different movie styles. So if it feels authentic, then yeah, but it's not something I'm specifically yearning for. Mm -hmm. Uh, Timothy, what do you think? I mean, is it something where uh, being somebody who who consumes fashion and, and it's and you and you look at it through a, a more sort of performance lens, um, you know, is it is it something where you'd like to see maybe them go back to uh, a live runway format or keep progressing in this kind of style? I think I think I think keep progressing, you know. I think I think that is the new the new like trend and it's quite nice because like the typical f format like it's kind of it's been you know everyone's been doing that for years and it's still sick but like if it yeah if it's in more different locations it's just more fun to look at do you know what I mean there's more there's you know there's outfits but then there's backgrounds and then there's this there's that this is going on it's more it's more of a vibe. I mean, it can sometimes, may, maybe if it's too much, it can distract people from looking at the outfits. But I think, yeah, maybe just definitely they should continue that, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and before the show, they had that uh, squad stream um, pre-show pre and they had, um, uh, I think it was Bella Hadid and Erica Badu speaking about, um, you know, the collection and, and taking, uh, they're taking calls from the audience. Um, how do you think, how well do you think that played out in comparison to, you know, uh, well, the, the, the performance that came after? Was it something that you'd like to see more with fashion shows going forward, a more interacti interactivity to them? Definitely. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I totally agree. It was it was good to have, you know, it's almost the pre-match ambles, wasn't it? It was, you know, discussion, anticipation. It's like being in, in the actual thing, you know, catch up with the industry and discuss what, you know, what's going to happen next. Mm. Um, I think it was interesting. I don't, it wouldn't, I don't think work every time, but I think, I think that worked well. Mm. Martin, what do you think? Um, I'm not as much for it just because I'm not a particularly big fan of like celebrity and influencer culture. <laughs> but maybe I'm just being a spoiled sport. So I don't <laughs> no, fair enough. I think it's um, uh, you know, I think it's a valid comment. Absolutely. Um, is there any other stray thoughts on you know this show, uh, whether it be the staging of it, uh, you know, the the collection aesthetics, uh, you know. Uh, ideas for the future, even like if, if you know, if we think Tishi's going to stay? I mean, I hope he does. I think, um, I think the glitz and glamour was replaced by a harder edge this time. And I hope that harder edge continues. I want to see how that plays out um, mixed with, in with the heritage. I think um, back to your previous question, to go back to a classic format now, just I think would be, you know, would be a shame. And for his journey to end, I think would be a shame just as he's really building pace. Mm. Yeah, I feel as though he's um, building a good momentum. And to be honest, I'm, I'm a big fan of him as a designer. The first couple of creations that he did at Burberry, I wasn't, I didn't particularly like them. I thought it was, uh, it was just sort of taking the streetwear trend and then attributing it to Burberry and times that didn't really fit, but with this, references to fishing, agriculture, obviously like loads of, loads of things which are really intrinsic to British culture now. I think it's, it's really picking up steam. I'd like to see where it goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he, it would be good if he stays because I feel like, yeah, it's exciting to see. Like I feel like this is realistically like maybe just the start for him just because it does take a while, you know, for people to get used to it and for, you know, to create something new. So, it would be good for him to stay just because, yeah, I really like the, the rebellious side of things, but he's also still, yeah, doing elements of the classic stuff, which is really good. Mm -hmm. No, I, I agree. I think, um, I think I like the direction of the show, uh, the aesthetics. I like the performance and I agree, you know, with Lydia, I, I don't think it makes sense to go back to just like, you know, that sort of stayed format uh, given everything that's going on. And, and also, you know, how well it did. I mean, I've been on Twitch before and I've seen gamers get big viewing numbers. I think these got, they got like 40,000 live viewers at once, which I've never seen. So, I mean, there's something quite exciting about that. And for fashion to reach that big of an audience, I think, I think if that's what happens with moving into a new sort of presentation platform, I think that's great. And we, we should keep going that way. Um, but I want to thank uh, my panelists for coming on today. I think we've had a really exciting and uh, informative discussion on the future of fashion and Burberry as well. Um, and I want to thank you all for watching. Uh, for more extensive Fashion Week coverage, be sure to visit Herod's Fifth Floor and showstudio.com. And if you're watching via Show Studio's YouTube, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe below. And we will see you next time.